Hey, good morning, girls. It's Thursday, and over here at Pottsburg Crossing, it's trash day. <laughs> so I get to clean out the fridge. <laughs> and anyway, I want to show you, you like my little necklace here. I want to show you my little bee necklace. I'm another gift, but it's actually got real honey in it. Isn't that cute? Anyway, <laughs> I love gifts and I love bee bee gifts too. So um, I got just some little shorts, you know, again for you. And um, I was thinking about today about my dad, you know, he passed away in 1981. But most of my life, he was real busy working. You know, I didn't have a lot of relationship with him, which, you know, because he was just busy. There were four kids and, you know, they were just always busy. And so, but um, he passed away in 81, but um, I got saved in 79. And so then I started, you know, witnessing to him and reading the Bible, you know, because that's, that's where I was, you know. And something happened we we came together and uh for those last two years and i saw the love of my father like i've never seen before it was it was just truly amazing it was it was like i was his favorite child <laughs> of course you know the other three kids they were here and there one in the keys and one down in tampa different they were different places and so um, but I was the only one home and, and I had the opportunity of being close to him and I just saw the love of a father and, but it didn't happen until after, after I got saved. Isn't that funny? And, but God just wanted me to show, wanted to show me the love, you know, that he has, you know, for me. And it was just awesome. It really, really was. So I, I treasure that. I really do. And I've kept that in my heart all these years. And, and so when I think of our heavenly father, you know, I, I, re I, I, I can relate back to my earthly father, which not everybody experiences a love like I did, you know. So I just feel blessed in that area. And so, um, but anyway, uh, one little ditty, little thing I was thinking, and that is, you know, I hear people say they want to live forever, you know, they and, you know, scientists, you know, they want to make it where you can live forever and, and you know, you get all these uh, mechanical parts and whatever you know and and so <clears throat> um but i was reading the bible and i came across this one i can't even remember what scripture it was but the lord just put in my spirit that um man is not meant to live forever because he's in sin and then sinful man is not meant to live forever originally i think before you know the fall of man he was meant to live forever but one of the reasons he doesn't is because you know sinful man the god doesn't want that sinful man to live forever and so um i think you know like 120 might be you know um what maybe a, a, the best goal is but um i don't know that people live that long but anyway um just thought i'd just put that out there and then i want to say you know sometimes we claim things we want to uh, claim the scriptures and the healing and all this stuff. And I just was reminded today of, I used to have that, what they call plantar fasciitis. And, um, I got it from, uh, being on my feet too, too much. I was, uh, working during the day, you know, at the courthouse. And then I, um, on the weekends and stuff, I was serving waiting tables, really walking a lot, a lot, a lot. And I got this. Thing. And so anyway, so Bishop Zink back then, Pastor Zink, uh, in our church, you know, he was saying, I have victory over defeat. <laughs> and so I claimed that. I said, you know, because we can look at physical things and claim spiritual. I don't know if y'all get me there. But I kept saying, I have victory over defeat. But I was referring to my feet. And so he was referring to a spiritual, you know, I've defeated the enemy and all that, you know. But man, I put that to use in my physical body. And I just kept walking. And every time I'd walk, I'd say, I have victory over defeat. I have victory over defeat. And you know, that stuff, it got cleared up. But even before it got cleared up, the Lord gave me a pair of shoes that had cork in the, in the heel. Because you can't walk on your heel is the problem. And it was this, I got it at the beach. It was a cork heel. And I, all of a sudden, I was relieved. You know, I could walk. And even though that plantar fasciitis wasn't healed yet, I I, I had no pain because I had the kind of shoes that I could walk in. Anyway, isn't that funny? So um, I'm going to end with January 6th. Here we are, January 6th in my Sarah Young. And it led me to Ephesians 3.20. But before I got to 20, I got to, I'm not sure, 15, I think. And this is Paul. But I just think this is really awesome. And I want to 
I want to put this out there for um, for everybody because uh, it really speaks to me. And this is this is my prayer. You know, I talk about what's my goal in life, and um, my goal is just to uh, have everybody saved. You know, bring us all into heaven. But this is Paul. It says, so I kneel humbly in awe before the Father of our Lord Jesus, the Messiah, the perfect Father of every father and child in heaven and on earth. And so, you know, there is a perfect Father, but I'm just so blessed. I'm so grateful that God gave me that, that earthly Father. But it says, a perfect Father of every father and child in heaven and on earth. So it's even talking about children in heaven. I love it. Father, I, you know, just it can be a father-child relationship in heaven, too. And so, you know, with our earthly fathers, probably, and whoever, along with Jesus. But anyway, it says, and I pray that he would unveil within you the unlimited riches of his glory and favor until a supernatural strength floods your innermost being with his divine might and explosive power. Then, by continually using your faith, the life of Christ will be released deep inside you and the resting place of his love will become the very source and root of your life. Then you will be empowered to discover what every holy one, every holy one experiences. You know, I think about some of the saints and stuff. You know, we we have the same rights and we have the same privileges and we have the same thoughts and stuff if we are in Christ, you know, and if we are really tuned into the Holy Spirit. Uh with every holy one, what every holy one experiences, a great multitude of the astonishing love of Christ in all its dimensions. How deeply intimate and far reaching is his love. How enduring and inclusive it is. Endless love beyond our measurement that transcends our understanding. This extravagant love pours into you until you are filled to overflowing with the fullness of God. Never doubt God's mighty power to work in you and accomplish all this. He will achieve infinitely more than your greatest request, your most unbelievable dream, and exceed your wildest imagination. He will outdo them all for his miraculous power constantly energizes you. In that great words? You know, this is from um, my Passion Bible. So I... I hope that blessed you. You know, the word of the Lord is so powerful and so loving. And um, you know what? You're, God, you're the Father's favorite. <laughs> I'll see you later. I love you. And Jesus loves you so much more. Bye.